welcome. Uh, this is uh, Marcus with the Sacred Art Gallery and, and one of our artists, Jan Norton, who happened to stop by today. And uh, we're just going to do a little artist spotlight here. Um, so first of all, let me pull out my cheat sheet. That's right, we all need uh, cheat sheets. <laughs> uh, so can you give us a little history about, where, uh, about you and where you grew up? Well, I grew up right here in Arizona. We're in Chandler today. I actually grew up in Tempe, just down the road. And um, yeah, I, I've always been an artist, not, not officially. I didn't know that was really a thing you could do, but I just was so shy as a kid that um, visual communication was the way I spoke and the way I processed my feelings. And to be honest, it kind of still is. Mm -hmm. And so I grew up here in the desert. I have desert colors in, in my work, and I have a degree in art, and I spent years as a graphic designer. And then there's just through the course of life that kind of beats you up. I turned to religious art when it, when it just became such a, a mission for me um, and a call to just some of the things that were going on in my life to really turn to Christ. And, and that just flipped everything for me. And suddenly I, I started painting and then without even knowing there was places to sell uh, religious art or Catholic art, um, everything started to fall into place. You know, and I wish, gosh, could I have not known that when I was 20? No, I guess not. <laughs> I had to go through life. So, so keeping out. So, yeah, 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 yeah you know, wow. and, and it just, you know, proves that um, sometimes the, the difficult circumstances in life, if you, like, walk with them and don't fight them um, the whole way, can really lead you to something better. What is the best and hardest part of being an artist? I guess the best is that what I'm doing is so authentic to me. I can't, I, I studied art because honestly I didn't know what else to study. I, I mean I probably could have handled something else. I did suffer through a business minor in my, with my art major. <laughs> but it really was the only thing I've ever wanted to do. And I didn't even give any concern to how I would do it, it's just what I did. Mm -hmm. So the fact that I can do something that's so authentic to me I think is what makes me happy now. You know, I'm not wishing, oh gosh, someday I'll be an artist and right now I'm over here doing someone's taxes, because that would be bad. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I think the di most difficult thing, it changes, but right now I would say is keeping that creative energy and, and keeping the excitement, because as you get some success, you get asked to do different things that people want, and you're working in that sort of commission mode, uh, which is how I worked as a graphic designer, and that's great, I've learned a lot with commissions, but sometimes your own energy kind of gets zapped a little bit, so you have to take breaks and go recharge and yeah. sometimes just drop everything you're doing and work on something new and then come back to it just to kind of keep that energy. So like exercise, and that's yeah. the challenge just to keep so going. So you were a graphic designer before. Mm -hmm. like, I was, uh, in the high tech world. Wow, gotcha, <laughs> that's pretty cool. <laughs> this is the piece of the visitation which we just um, passed and I, I was not quite aware of it in my calendar because I'm on vacation myself and, and as I saw it go through the, the internet I realized what, we, what day we're on. Um, so this one, I have Elizabeth here in the foreground, and you can see she is about six months pregnant with, with John, and I purposely made him visible um, just so you could tell the stage that he's in, but also just kind of an affirmation of, of life in any age, in any circumstance. And so she's painted in sort of duller, um, faded colors because she's older, and so that youth and that vibrancy might have been gone, but she's still got this beautiful, complex pattern going on and she's looking into the sunset and her halo kind of has these sunset colors and um, the, the, the foliage in here is drier. In fact, in the, the foreground where she is, you can't maybe see it on the phone, but there's little locusts and bees in here to indicate um, some of the storyline of St. John the Baptist later on. And then in the distance, coming towards her with this sort of flock of, of geese, which is a symbol of the Holy Spirit, is a young Mary. And um, it's a little challenging to see unless you're standing in front, but the light is actually coming from a cruciform shape in her womb. And so she's bringing the light with her and she's bringing the dawn. And I just was intrigued um, as I was thinking about what to do about this story with the old and the new coming together and the Old Testament and the New Testament and the old covenants and the new promise um, coming together and, and, and the meeting of those two and the, the symbology of just Mary being affirmed and like, yes, you're working you know, so closely with Christ and that's what you're supposed to be doing. And Elizabeth, who had to wait so long, but you're also part of the story and you haven't been forgotten. And so just that, that meeting to me was sort of the story. We could talk about my book. I'll, I'll grab my copy. Yeah. <laughs> my copy is full of um, sticky notes because when I do interviews, I have to be able to find the same page. <laughs> and I'm not wearing glasses, so don't ask me to find too much. Yeah, so maybe tell us a little bit about it. You just, yeah. just published it right. This like came this out, year, right? Yeah, this came out in January, and I, my first book on the Stations of the Cross 
sort of swept through again because Lent came up before, <laughs> before I could really talk about this one. But um, this one is on the Beatitudes, called Arise to Blessedness, and it's published by Ave Maria Press. And um, it's really a self-guided retreat using modern saints, eight modern saints, to exemplify each of the eight Beatitudes. And so just taking a look at what transformed in their life and, and changed them from their maybe circumstances into how they followed Christ and, and what they were called to do in their life. And so as you go through the book, there's a lot of art in it. There's 24 pieces of art, I think. And so you go through, um, for example, Blessed is the Poor in Spirit. And we have a kind of a conceptual art piece for each of the Beatitudes wow. that describes the, be the Beatitude and what it is. And in, in this particular one, I have a, a man sort of wandering through his life, not looking up to where he's going, but trusting in the Spirit. And, and it flows through and gets, gets him there eventually. So has this been an idea of yours for a while then? Yeah, well, um, I, I thought about doing the Beatitudes. And when um, Ave Maria came to me, I, Again, this is my second book, so they said, hey, what are you working on? And I went, uh, I don't know, because I'm <laughs> more of an artist than an author, or that, that's been my history, so it didn't occur to me they would want a second book. And so this was one of the ideas I put forth, and um, actually I had to sort of figure out what I wanted to say about it as I was writing it, because mm -hmm. I didn't really know, um, and I knew the structure, because it followed the structure of the first book, where we have something conceptual, and then we have a, a painted um, verse, and then, it, oops, and then each one we have then a painted saint that exemplifies that piece. Um, but when I started writing it, and I, I always, even though it's an embarrassing story, I think it's important, <laughs> I wasn't sure how I wanted to present the Beatitudes, and I kind of started this beginning. I knew it was kind of off base, but I sent it to my editor, and this is where working with someone is a good idea, because mm -hmm. she immediately came back and said, well, that sounds like you're gonna be like teaching the Beatitudes to someone in a chair who's never gonna get up and live them, which isn't really what I wanted to go for. <laughs> so. It, it caused me to go back and think, okay, what do I really think about the Beatitudes? And what I realized is how scary they can be because the way we want to live in life is to um, control everything and be comfortable and not be put out. And what Christ asks us to do, if we, if we choose to follow him, is completely the opposite. And that's a little frightening because, you know, at least for me, I don't know. So I tried to go through and each saint really look at their lives and see how do they overcome that fear? You know, how do they walk that walk? And in spite of fear, because you don't, maybe you don't want to overcome it, but you, you walk with it. And so, um, so that's, I really was taking the journey as I wrote the book. So if anybody reads this, they're walking with me. They're walking wow. with Christ. And you're walking with the saints. Because you know, I didn't go to Catholic school, but um, I realized learning about saints, like how much we need other people's example. You know, we're not, oh, otherwise sure. we think we're doing it all. <laughs> we're all making, you know, reinventing the wheel on our own. And no, no, no. There's been people who've done this before. And, and we should turn to them. And then you so, get to experience her beautiful artwork too. So yes, like I said, there's 24 pieces of art and <laughs> so available. The journey you know, and yeah, her artwork. Originals so. are available, but there's they're all in the book too, and so all kinds of stuff. Wow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna shake your hand. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Smile. Yeah. <laughs>